What is up everyone? This is Luciano with Korg here today with Alto Music. We're going to be talking about the Korg Nautilus Music Workstation today. We're going to be talking about the top features of this keyboard first and then we're going to go into some cool quick tips that you want to know if you're a keyboard player performing both live or in the studio. So let's dive in. So first thing we're going to talk about the outside of the Nautilus, the main panel and the streamlined workflow that we have going on with this keyboard. So let's take a look. So first thing first, if you're looking at this keyboard and you've seen other workstations uh, that we've made at Korg, we went with a nice streamlined and easy to use approach on this instrument. So starting at the right side of Nautilus, you're gonna see that we have a mode button. Now the mode button is now used to select whichever mode you wanna enter on Nautilus. Instead of having physical buttons on the panel, we now have it all centralized through the display of Nautilus. So you see really nice graphics here. Uh, and below the mode button, we have quick access buttons. Now, these are great because they are configurable by you. So depending on where you need to go to quickly on Nautilus, for example, for myself, I have A will bring me to my set list and B will bring me to my program mode. But you can configure these extremely easily to have the Nautilus do whatever you would like. You could even do commands like stopping or recording in the sequencer mode. Now the page button, wherever you are on Nautilus, it will give you the next level uh, of submenus to see. So if you ever can't find what you're looking for on Nautilus, it's very simple, go ahead and click the page button and you will see all of the submenus, any settings that you can change. Now coming over to the center of Nautilus, we do have a seven inch color touch view display and it is touch and drag sensitive. Uh, so it's really nice if you're adjusting faders. Uh, also a fun little thing I always say, you can raise and lower the piano lid, which does affect the way the piano sounds. If I lower the lid. So that's a really cool feature and it does take advantage of the touch and drag sensitivity on the display. Now coming over to the left side of the panel, we have a very useful part of Nautilus and a couple of knobs I wanna go over. The first are these six real-time control knobs. Now the real-time control knobs, first thing that's fun about them is they do go down to be flush with the panel. So if you're a performing keyboard player uh, and you're live on the gig and you don't wanna accidentally hit one of the knobs, uh, you can definitely put them down so you don't accidentally adjust the parameter. It's happened to all of us at some point on stage. Uh, but the other thing that's great is by default, they will affect uh, parameters such as cutoff, resonance, uh, your effects, your reverb amount, uh, but you can also assign them to do whatever you like on Nautilus. So later in the video, we'll go into a little bit about how you can assign those real-time control knobs to do whatever you want, so stay tuned for that. But before we do that, I wanna tell you about my favorite knob on the Nautilus, it is the Dynamics knob. Now, if you've ever been on a gig, especially for me, I'm a pianist, I'm used to playing weighted keyboards, but maybe a ballad comes up in the set and I need to play a little bit more uh, delicately. I don't wanna get the high velocity all the time. I need to be sensitive, but I'm not feeling like I can play sensitively. The dynamic knob is very simple, uh, and all you have to do is turn it on, and no matter what sound you are using on Nautilus, you can simply uh, adjust the sensitivity of the key bed. So, for example, if I turn it all the way up on this piano sound, you're gonna see I'm gonna get a very high velocity sound out of the piano. Very, a lot of bite on that sound. If I scale it back, however, I'm playing the same intensity on the key bed. So if I need to play a nice subtle patch, versus with the dynamic sound all the way up, kill your hands if you're on a gig and you need to have that sensitivity or dig in a little bit more. Now below uh, the dynamic knob on Nautilus, you're gonna see octave switching buttons, which are new uh, to Nautilus, which is not present on the Kronos, and it's very convenient, especially when you're working with a smaller 61 key size. Uh, and that can also be used to transpose by holding the shift button as well. To the left of our octave buttons, you're gonna see control for the drum track, arpeggiator, as well as easy access to turn on and off your master effects and total effects. So we're gonna dive into some of the top features that make Nautilus a great choice if you're a performing keyboardist, both live or if you're using it in the studio. First thing to understand, if you're new to Korg workstations, uh, we basically have two main modes that we organize sounds in. We have program mode, think of that as the single sound by itself, 
uh, and we have combination mode where you can take these programs and put them together uh, and have them put together in really creative ways. You can have them layered, split. Uh, that's called combination mode. And in combination mode, you can have up to 16 different programs put together. So there's a lot of power. Uh, and I want to show you a couple of quick ways to transition a sound that you might really like from program into combination mode. So let's dive in. We'll start out with, uh, let's get an electric piano to start. So I'm going to use this EP Mark I, uh, nice sound. So that's a really nice patch. So one great thing about the Korg Nautilus is that it has nine sound engines that are built in. So why is this important to you? No matter what type of sound you want to create on Nautilus, so it can be pianos, electric pianos, organs, great synth sounds, the Nautilus has a dedicated sound engine to create all different types of sound. Uh, and this is borrowed actually from our Kronos, but now with Nautilus, we added plenty of new sound content uh, to keep it fresh. So if you're new to Nautilus, you're going to have lots to explore within the nine sound engines. But if you want to take this electric piano sound and put it together with something else very quickly, you'll notice there are two convenient buttons at the bottom of the Nautilus display. There's quick layer and there is quick split. Now these will be present no matter what sound you have called up on Nautilus. Um, and if you click, for example, this quick split button, you're gonna notice that it brings us to this really nice visual uh, where we can see the sound that I originally had selected, which was that EP, uh, and whatever program I had previously selected. So I wanna show you something. If we wanna, let's say, split this with a bass, I'm gonna go ahead and click in this side here, and we can go to category. And in category, I can see all of my different instrument sounds. So I'm gonna to go to bass and let's select acoustic bass. That sounds good. We'll click okay. Now, you notice that the bass is now on the right and look how easy it is to go ahead and change that. I can use my select split mode function here and I can reverse those. So now I have my bass. So next thing I'm hearing, if I'm gonna use this on a gig, I wanna have this EP a little bit lower, maybe the octave lower. Well, this quick split mode gives you direct access to do that. I can go to my EP section here on the right. Octave, we'll go down an octave. So we're getting there already. Uh, and finally, a quick little tip for you, split point. Uh, you can obviously click where it says split point and use your dial to go ahead and adjust the split point, but you can hold the enter button and select where you wanna split the keyboard. And that will automatically adjust the graphic here. It also gives you very easy control to adjust volume levels for both, right? So. Now the next thing that's great is when you're in Nautilus in this quick split mode, you can easily write that to a combination. So it gives you the building blocks to take any single program uh, and make something out of it uh, and dive right in. All right, so we're gonna use that quick split functionality now to show you how easy it is to start building uh, your own combination. So I set up two really cool uh, synth sounds. I have this stab synth in the left. And in the right, I have this really cool uh, express lead. So we're still in the quick split mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and write the split to a combination. So watch how easy this is. I can choose which category I wanna save it in. So if I come in here, uh, I'm gonna put it in my user category. I can name it. It already gave me a name by default. Uh, and we'll choose where and which slot we're gonna save it to. Now, welcome to combination mode on Nautilus. So I wanna show you a couple things about what a nice visual Nautilus brings to the table. Uh, but the main goal of combination mode is to allow you to layer different timbres, up to 16 of those programs, like I mentioned, and put them together. You can see that we've now put two together from quick split mode. Uh, and it's very simple to go ahead and add additional timbres by just clicking the plus button. Now let's talk about what else you get uh, when you're within combination mode. Uh, and to do that, I wanna go to the arpeggiator and drum track page on Nautilus. Now this is a new feature of Nautilus, and for those of you out there gigging who might wanna have a little bit of uh, either accompaniments or drum tracks with whatever you're playing, or a variety of arpeggiator patterns, Nautilus has you covered with drum and arpeggiator scenes. So drum and arpeggiator scenes are a new functionality to Nautilus, and what it means, you get four scenes per program and per combination, uh, and within each of these scenes, if you're in combination mode like we are now, you can have two arpeggiator patterns, so arpeggiator A and B, and the drum track. You can have four different iterations of this as well. So it's a lot of variety packed into one sound. So 
Let's give a listen what we have going on with this new combi that we just created uh, now. So let's start the arpeggiator and drum tracks. And finally four. So as you can hear, different variety in drum tracks and arpeggiator patterns, but What's really great about Nautilus and the spirit of this keyboard is that it's very easy for you to adjust and customize these items. So it's as simple as clicking the edit button and you can see I can select whichever scene I wanna edit. Uh, and if I wanna change, for example, which arpeggiator pattern is in scene one. I can go in and see all thousands of arpeggiator patterns with the click of a button. So it's very easy to lock these items in when you're in combination mode uh, and saving it is a simple that's clicking the drop down arrow from the top right, uh, and you can go ahead and write the combination. So I hope you enjoyed. Those are a couple of my favorite features if you're using Nautilus Live or in the studio, but there's definitely plenty more information for you to find out about Nautilus. We have Korg video manuals, which offer deep, in-depth tutorials about this keyboard, as well as a very thorough user manual as you wanna go deeper. But once again, this is Luciano here today with Alta Music and the Korg Nautilus. Thank you for watching.